Today's roads carry more and more traffic. This leads to congestion with long hold-ups, especially at busy road junctions. All road users suffer alike. Buses are delayed and cannot keep to schedules, so services become unreliable, and that means more cars, bigger traffic build-up, and worse congestion. Improved bus services can ease the traffic situation. And this is where bus priority measures, such as selective detection, come in. The idea is simple. Buses are fitted with a special unit. On approaching a junction, they pass over a loop in the road. This transmits a signal which is reflected by the bus unit, identified by the detector, and passed to the control equipment. On receiving the message that a bus is coming, it activates the signals to give the bus priority across the junction with minimum delay. To illustrate this technique, an experiment in Derby used detection equipment which was not later adopted for general use. The recommended equipment is the transponder, now in use on Swansea buses. Briargate and Ford Street is the busy junction used for the Derby experiment. Here, priority has been given to buses coming from under the bridge in the right turning lane. By installing selective detection equipment, bus delays have been substantially reduced. But granting priority to buses means shortening the time for traffic to pass on other approaches. So an inhibit period, during which no further priority change is allowed, is used to restore the balance. To see how the system works, here in diagrammatic form is the same junction with its three phases. Firstly A, then B, which has the selective detection priority, and lastly the opposing phase C. Operating normally, without any bus priority calls, each phase has its own predetermined maximum time setting. A has the longest time because it carries the highest volume of traffic. Then B, the priority phase, and the opposing phase C. A, B and C in that order make up one complete cycle. Now we're going to see what happens if a bus makes a priority call on B during the early part of A. Let's say that A has got as far as this, when the bus comes along from under the bridge and over the loop. The loop is activated, the lights are changed, and the bus is allowed through. B then continues to run out its normal time, and so does C, completing the cycle. The result is that A has been cut short, but before we see how the balance is restored, let's see again what happens on the road. The bus approaches the junction during A, and its presence is detected by the first loop. The signals are changed, reducing A, and allowing the bus immediately through on B. The result is that during that cycle, A has been cut down to give B priority, and A must be compensated. In fact, A has been reduced by more than half, and so an inhibit period begins, giving compensation to A. B and C run normally, and the balance is restored. Now we have seen what happens when a priority is called during A. It simply allows the bus through and compensates. But what happens if a priority is called during C? that is, the oncoming traffic. Normally, the phasing would continue with A. Well, C is stopped, A is missed out altogether, and the bus is allowed through on B. The bus having cleared the junction, the traffic on C is allowed to continue. Let's look at this again. C is interrupted to allow immediate priority to B. A is missed out, and C continues in normal sequence. During the inhibit period, compensation is given firstly to A. B will continue as normal, but if a bus arrives late during B, 
the green is specially extended. Priority extensions disrupt so little that no readjustments are necessary. C is compensated due to the previous change. Using a system of this type to give priority to buses at signal junctions can mean that bus journey times through junctions are more consistent. In many cases, the maximum delay can be reduced by as much as 75%. This sort of saving can be made at hundreds of junctions throughout the country's network of roads. Once a bus has been fitted out, the signal control equipment only needs to be modified to take advantage of the system. The result is a more reliable bus service.